Nick Baldwin for Severe MMA here with a UFC flyweight fighter who takes on Caitlin Chukagian this weekend at UFC on Fox 30 here in Calgary, Alberta, Cali uh, Canada. It is Alexis Davis. Alexis, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Just a day out from the weight cut. Uh, I guess we'll start with the uh, the annoying stuff first. Uh, how is the weight cut going? I know uh, going down to 25, you have to cut a little more weight than, than usual, but uh, everything going okay? Uh, it's going great. Uh, well, I just have to actually stay on a diet this time. I could get away with a lot more at 35. I could eat junk, you know, just obviously, you know, in proportions with doing 35. So I just have to be a little bit smarter, but uh, I'm already almost, almost on weight. I'll do a little bit of cutting tonight and then I should be good. Do you feel better at 125? You, you've gotten a few, a couple wins down there already. Uh, you're, you're on a two-fight winning streak. Just you know, physically and besides cutting the extra 10 pounds, it, is flyweight sort of the right place for you? Do you feel good there? I do. Um, I feel very comfortable. I was actually considering going to flyweight before I was signed with UFC while I was still at Invicta, but then obviously with the opportunity of the UFC and only having the 35ers, the bantam weight, then I just just decided to stay at that weight class. No chance you ever fight back at bandweight. No point. Yeah, there's always a chance. You know, I don't. Uh, I don't really. Um, a fight's a fight for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter what weight class. And right now, I mean, you're number three in the flyweight division. It, it's a newer division, so you know a lot of fighters can drop down from bandweight and start making even bigger waves at flyweight, kind of like what what you did. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess as far as the title picture goes, I mean, Caitlin Chukagian is right up there as well. Where do you sit with a victory over her? Uh, I think you know it's gonna put me right up you know if not next in line one more fight and you know it just puts me that one step closer but really just right now I'm just trying to stay focus on the task at hand you know you never know what's going to happen in the division or you know what you know matchmakers are, are going to decide and how things are going to play out so just uh, working on just trying to get that strong win tonight or Saturday night. You got the Canadian advantage. Is that a real thing? Is that, uh, you know, does that change everything? I don't know. I feel like when you fight in Canada, they're like so welcoming to everybody. Like, uh, you know, some places where you go, it, it really does almost matter like where you're from. But I feel like, I don't know, we're just so nice being Canadian. Do you like fighting at home? I, I do. You know what? Um, I'd be great to do this fight card and then do the Toronto one. That because that's really close to home for me. So, um, but you know, I'm just, I'm just happy fighting. <laughs> as far as the actual matchup against uh, Caitlin Chukagin, uh, you know, as far as your research goes and watching the tape, what, what have you sort of seen? Where do you sort of, uh, where are you better than her? Uh, she's a great fighter, uh, great, great stand up. She's got that long reach and she uses it uh, very well, like long legs. Uh, she keeps on the outside. So uh, I could say most people are like, well, your advantage is on the ground, but. It's hard to really say because she's a brown belt as well. She's no slouch. So just because she hasn't had as many opportunities or, you know, has really worked her stand-up more than anything, you can never, can never expect anything, sure. especially in a fight. How have you trained uh, and, and gotten ready for her size advantage? Uh, working with uh, a lot of opponents that, you know, ha have that similar height, um, working with people with a, kind of a, a similar style, you can you can never get exactly to your opponent's style. We can get as close as right. you can and yeah. try to just prepare for everything. Do you care that you're you're the underdog? And you know, either way, does that surprise you? No, no, I don't even look at that stuff. I'm like, I actually prefer to be the underdog more than anything. Takes pressure off. You. Yeah, you know, you know what? It's I'm I can win any fight as long as I'm. If I fight my fight, that's how that's how I like to believe. You know, as long as I believe in myself, then I have to win. Do you have any clue why the odds makers have Chukagan favored over you? Any sort of reason you can come up with? Huh. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, that's a question for them, not you. Yeah. But. I'm like ah, I don't even worry about it. <laughs> what do you think about the title picture? I know you, you you said earlier you're pretty close with a win over Chukagan mm -hmm. on Saturday, but we have a a title fight. Finally announced Nico Montano and, and Val Valentino Shevchenko will, will go toe-to-toe -to -toe in September in Dallas. So what do you make of that matchup? Shevchenko, of course, is a big favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you make of that? And I guess, you know, who, who, who is the early pick? Uh, I'm just really, I'm just excited that they finally have a, a title fight, like actual match that's yeah. coming up. You know, it, it's been rumored and they're like, oh, but actually it was, I've heard that they were going to put it on this card and then, things didn't fall through. So I'm just really excited that we can kind of get this division starting to go. 
how frustrating was that as a fighter who's number three in the division you're real close i mean there's cr eubanks shevchenko and i think you that's the top three at flyweight right now besides the champion montano and perhaps if Montano had stayed a bit more active now, of course, she's been injured. Mm -hmm. So not, not much you can do about that. It's out of everybody's control. But has it been frustrating? Maybe, you know, had that not been the case, you could have been fighting for a title already. No, no, not with the, because the vision is so new. Sure. You know, uh, just pretty much started back in December. So I don't really, I feel like they were still just trying to figure out. There's where no rush. Yeah, where everyone was going to lie in the rankings. And, you know, there's still a lot of things that I imagine that they're tweaking. So, uh, you know, just kind of take them as they come and see what happens. How much of a chance do you give uh, Montano, the, the champion? And listen to this. Uh, she is the, uh, the biggest underdog, opening underdog as a UFC champion in history, which is pretty crazy. But do you, do you give her a shot? Of course. Of course you can. You know, she's got a uh, great ground game and, you know, she's obviously, it's it's hard because MMA is a, a different style than like Muay Thai, but you can never give oh, man, a, a disadvantage to either one of them in either either set of style because, look, we had um, Valentina come out with that arm bar victory. Right. So, you know, that's probably something definitely that she's working on and I imagine like, uh, that she's working a lot on her her stand up, so I, I'm, you know, and I'm just excited to see how it's gonna play out. What's it been like these past uh, few fights fighting as a mom? I know uh, we we talked right out, or you know, a little while after you you had your son, and you've had a few fights since then. What has that been like, sort of dealing with? Well, I need a babysitter at least, you know, figuring that all out. Has that been complicated or pretty easy? Uh, no, complicated for <laughs> sure, especially like. Um, Man, being a mom, if anybody else is watching, they they know with like things change so much with kids. I think I got it down, and then it changes all over <laughs> again. Uh, but you know what? I, that's I just you know he may be only two, but thank God for like his patience. Like I feel bad, obviously that mom guilt being gone, especially like at fight camp because you have to commit so much of your time. But it's just all about scheduling and just trying to get. You know, I may not work out as much as I used to, but uh, just better quality workouts. I just have to. And, you know, it is better for my body, too. That has to be the best feeling going home after a fight. You, you don't need to train every day for the next little while until you get another fight. And just being able to spend time with him, that must be fantastic. Yeah, we already we are like already thinking about things that we're going to do after the fight, places we're going to go and, you know, just spend some good quality time together. Is he here or did he stay home? No, no, no. He stays home. He's too, my son's too crazy. He would <laughs> be chasing him. That'd be my cardio workout would be chasing him around the hotel. Maybe when he's older, if you're still fighting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, just two, two's a, a tough age, for, sure. I think, for a little boy. For with, UFC. Yeah, for a little boy with so much energy. <laughs> well, Alexis, it's UFC on Fox 30. You're taking on Caitlin Chukagan. How do you think you get the job done? Uh, you know what? I'm just hoping with uh, a good, solid victory in the end. Uh, you know, hoping it's not going to run to decision, which, you know, it's something that we both have kind of in common. So just uh, a good, solid fight. Thanks for the time, Alexis, and the best of luck to you on Saturday. Uh, thank you.